Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite tropes of all time and that is the grumpy sunshine trope. Baby, baby. So I have 10 books to recommend to you today that have the grumpy sunshine trope in them. The grumpy sunshine trope is basically a trope where one of the people in the couple is a grump kind of stoic and then the other one is bubbly sunshine carefree kind of character so kind of like opposites attract so i have a few recommendations for you so let's dive right on into these of course a staple in the grumpy sunshine trope is the duchess deal by tessa dare um this is the very beautiful step back so this is of course a historical romance and this is the first book in the girl meets duke series i love this series and i can't wait for book four to come out i've been waiting literally years for book four this is about the duke of ashbury and emma so the duke of ashbury he just came back from war he is heavily scarred um and his fiance who was engaged to him before he went off to war just left him because she doesn't want to marry a man with a scar on his face and is wounded from war and which is messed up obviously so the heroine in here she is her wedding dressmaker and she has not received payment yet for the wedding dress she worked so incredibly hard for and so she walks into the duke of ashbury's house wearing the wedding dress and being like look how good this dress is you need to pay me even if she's not wearing it look how much time and effort and money i spent making this dress you have to pay me for this and so the Duke of Ashbury sees her in this wedding dress and is like, hmm, I need a wife to produce heirs. Why not just marry this woman who's wearing a wedding dress in my room? So he's like, how about you marry me? She has her own reasons for saying yes, but she does say yes. And so they get in a marriage of convenience somewhat. Um, he just needs an heir and uh, she needs it for another reason. The hero in here is the one that is the grump and she is more of the sunshine. He is very stoic, very grumpy. His fiance did some messed up things to him, obviously, said some messed up things. She is just like really bubbly and fun and um, is not a grump. <laughs> Their dynamic in here is just really, really, really great. And I feel like a lot of Tessa Dare's books have the grumpy sunshine trope in them, so I definitely check out more of her books. So if you haven't read a historical romance before ever, this is definitely one to pick up. I feel like this is a great starter into the romance genre. I feel like this was one of the first ones that I read and it was really easy to get into. Next, I have A Nordic King by Karina Halley. This is a royal romance. So the hero in here is the king of Norway, I wanna say, right? And the heroine is their young nanny, or compared to him, she's young. So this is an age gap romance because she is quite younger than him. So she applies to be a nanny for this king's daughters. Um, he is recently a widow and he has two little girls. And right when she comes into the interview room, he immediately says no because he is very attracted to her. Um, but right when the, his little girls meet her, they just fall in love with her. So he reluctantly has to agree to hire her as their nanny. He is very much a grump because of what his previous relationship put him through. Um, his wife was a piece of work and it kind of like rubbed off on him so he's very grumpy and she is just precious the heroine in here she's precious she is bubbly sunshine carefree fun she will do anything for these little girls this romance is so swoony and i feel like their dynamic works really well too and just the age gap in here was done really well i think as well so um if you're wanting a royalty romance age gap romance that's also grumpy sunshine this is a great great one. This might be my favorite Grumpy Sunshine romance. Next I have A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. I have another Talia Hibbert on this list in a couple minutes. Um, but man, I love this one. This one is different because the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine. This is about Ruth and Evan. So Evan just moved next door to Ruth. They live next to each other in their apartment complex. Evan comes over one day to bring her a home-cooked meal because Evan loves to cook and Ruth is like, what are you doing? What's going on? And so um, <laughs> he notices that she doesn't really take care of herself all that often because she likes to zone in on her work. She's a graphic designer. She's a comic book. Um, she's a graphic designer and she draws like illustrations for comic books and comics and graphic novels and stuff. She is very honed in on her work and sometimes she forgets to eat. And so he's like, how about I cook you food if you like want to share comics with me in return, like to let me read them or learn about them because he wants to get to know Ruth so badly. And she's just like, oh, okay like she reluctantly says okay and then obviously through them spending time together they start to fall in love <laughs> um i just love this ruth is definitely a grump she's like a hermit she stays all day in her house in her apartment wearing pjs and laying in bed and doing work <laughs> So she does all day and she loves it. So I really applaud her for that. Ruth is also autistic. So there is that representation for you in here. Um, and so she is kind of a grump because she pushes people away a lot because she has been criticized for how she communicates with people. Um, but Evan is just so incredibly patient and kind and 
loving towards her. Next I have The Gravity of Us by Brittany C. Cherry, the uh, fourth book in the Element series. You don't have to read them in order. These books do not correlate with each other whatsoever. So I'm gonna kind of have to be vague with this one because I don't want to spoil anything for you. So this is about Graham and Lucy. So Graham recently became a single father to a little baby infant. Like she was just born and he is now single. And he is a very popular writer and he is not able to do his work and provide for him and his daughter. And he, he can't take care of her at the same time and then work at the same time. It's very hard for him to multitask his job and taking care of the baby. He meets Lucy one day and by some means she warms her way into his life and starts helping him take care of the baby even though he is very, very reluctant to ask for help. He's one of those heroes that is like, I can do everything, I don't need to ask for help. And Lucy can see that he is struggling. And so she inserts herself into his life to help him with this baby. That's a very vague summary. I can't really talk too much about it because it could spoil literally anything. The hero in here is definitely the grump and she is the sunshine. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She will talk about anything and everything. And he just is closed mouth, closed lipped, stoic faced grumpy. <laughs> this is like one of the ultimate grumpy sunshines I've ever read. Um, this is definitely like kind of like a staple in the in the subgenre trope, whatever. Um, but I think this is just done incredibly well. It's one of my favorites by Brittany C. Cherry, so I totally recommend. I have another historical for you. I have Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. Um, this one has a beautiful step back as well. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my word. So pretty. This is about Lady Phoebe and Captain James Trevelyan. So Lady Phoebe, um, I believe she's the sister to a duke and the duke hires James to kind of be her bodyguard. Phoebe is blind and so during this time period it's very hard for someone who is visually impaired to get around in society. There's not all that many things that are accessible that we have nowadays back then. Like there's no elevators, there's no um, I don't know if they use guide dogs back then. That's a good thing to look up. I don't know. Um, but like they don't have the same technology we do nowadays. And so she kind of needs somebody to help her get around, you know, even though Phoebe does not think she needs a bodyguard, her brother forces her to have one. And so this is kind of like an age gap romance as well. She is a little bit younger, a little bit younger than uh, James. And through them spending time together because he is her bodyguard and has to be with her literally every second of the day, um, they start to fall in love. And oh my gosh. So Phoebe is very bright and bubbly and loves like everything. She is super expressive. I love her. And then James is kind of like a little grumpy. He's kind of like also fits this all book also fits the bill for like I hate everybody in the world but you because he literally hates everybody. But Phoebe, he adores Phoebe. He loves her. He would do anything for this woman. I adore him. Um, he wants the best for her. And at one point in the book, he thinks that leaving her might be the best thing. But I love him because he's one of those heroes who doesn't go through with that. He reevaluates his thoughts and is like, would she actually be better off without me? And it makes him rethink everything. I love James. I love Phoebe. This couple is just so cute and their dynamic is perfect. I love them. Here's that other Talia Hibbert. We have Actor Age Eve Brown. I love this book. <laughs> so this is my favorite book of the year so far. I adore it. This is about Eve and Jacob. So Eve is kind of like a trust fund baby. Her parents at the beginning of this book are like, hey, we're cutting you off from the money that you have because they're rich. Um, <laughs> and like, we're cutting you off because you haven't been able to keep a steady job for a year. So in order to get your money back, we're uh, requiring you to keep a steady job for an entire year. And so she kind of like drives around after this conversation, she comes across this bed and breakfast that has a help wanted sign and that they're doing interviews right now. She just walks in on a whim to see what's going on, what's it like. And it's a position to be a chef in this bed and breakfast. And right when she walks into the interview room, she sees Jacob who is the owner of the bed and breakfast. And right when Jacob sees Eve, he does not like her. <laughs> she has strange purple hair. She's wearing a t-shirt that with a weird saying on it. She is soaking wet from the rain and she didn't even come with a resume. And he's just very put off by her. But things happen and he's kind of like put in a bind to where he ends up having to have to hire Eve. Like he is required to hire Eve. Like he has no other choice. Well then also she accidentally may or may not act like hit Jacob with her car at one point after the interview. And then she has to help him and nurse him back to health while staying in his room with him in the bed and breakfast. Um, but Eve is definitely bubbly, carefree, sunshine, doesn't really care about the rules, whereas Jacob is very strict, orderly, wants things done the way he wants it and will very, be very put off if they're not done the way he wants. Jacob is also autistic. So there's that representation in another Tally Hibbert book. Tally Hibbert book. Tally Hibbert is just amazing in her diversity. I love her. Eve is slowly starting to realize that she may or may also be autistic. And so she's kind of like going through the journey of this book in this book as well. Um, but 
he is definitely the grump see she is the sunshine i just love this dynamic so much it's my favorite book of the year so of course i would recommend this next i have always only you by chloe lee another favorite of the year i adore this book um this is another one where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine so this is about ren ren and frankie ren is on a hockey team and frankie is kind of like the social media manager for the hockey team so ren has been crushing on frankie for literally years he um hasn't been seeing anybody else ever since he met her um and he's just waiting for the time when she realizes that he is there right in front of her like he's being really patient with her because um he knows that she struggles with intimacy she is also autistic so another autistic character for you i don't also in this video i don't mean to sound like that people who are aut aut who are autistic are grumpy that's not what i mean to say from this video by the way it just that's how a lot of these books plan out pan out so don't think i'm saying that people who have autism are grumpy all of them are i am not saying that at all i feel like it depends on each person even if you don't have autism you could be grumpy you couldn't be but it just so happens that some of these books have characters who are autism in it frankie also walks with a cane i believe she has rheumatoid arthritis as well um so she has a chronic illness so i love that representation as somebody who does have a chronic illness at the beginning of this book um frankie's apartment gets broken into and Ren learns about it and he invites her to come stay at his house while they're fixing up everything that was broken by the house like the door the lock the windows everything like that and so she stays in his house for a couple days and so it's a forced proximity and they're forced to like stay with each other and finally confront their feelings and oh my gosh this book is so stinking cute i love this ren is like such a sweetie and a softie he loves shakespeare is so cute he loves the cutest things and then frankie is very stoic and straight laced and wants things done the way that she wants it and she can be a grump sometimes she even calls herself a grump many times in this book and so i adore her i adore both of these characters and i love this couple and i wish we had another book about them honestly next i have a novella for you we have pool girl by cassie mint this is another age gap romance this is very short this is like how many pages 48 pages <laughs> very short our heroine in here she loves to swim and so like every single day to like wind down the night she like gets on a pool floaty at her apartment complex and like floats on the pool for a little bit she does this because she loves being in the water but she also does this because the pool um you can see the pool from the caretaker's office that's like next to the pool and she's been crushing on the caretaker of the apartment for a while and so she just wants him to finally notice her and um the heroine she works at a i want to say kind of like a sea world kind of thing <laughs> um because she dresses up as a mermaid and pretends to be a mermaid in the water for children to come see her um and so she just loves the water she's happy carefree loves her job loves her life and the heroine here he is the caretaker um and he is very big uh, gruff kind of like scarred um and he doesn't think that he deserves her he watches her obviously from the pool um but he's never like done anything like gone up to her or said anything because he doesn't think that he deserves her because he's such this he thinks he's an ugly old man um there is an age gap in here but she can't help but crush on him and then finally the like the dam breaks and the two of them finally get together and oh this is hot this is fun this is a great novella i really recommend it next i have behind closed doors by jl berg um this is about roman and Kara. roman is this big boss guy uh, people are afraid of him because he's this big mean boss guy um and then Kara is his temporary assistant because his normal assistant is giving birth she's pregnant um or about to give birth when he first sees her he's like where's my assistant what's going on and she's being as calm as possible she's being kind to him and she's just like I'm your new assistant now i'll be with you for a couple of days and he's just very put off by it obviously but then they start to get to know one another and uh they start a very forbidden relationship in the office um so if you love office romances i really like this one there are scenes in the office if you know what i mean and sometimes i love those so um i really enjoyed this one and this one the grumpy sunshine is very apparent in here and lastly i want to talk about a staple in the romance community we have archer's voice by mia sheridan now the grumpy sunshine part in here kind of like shifts throughout the book because archer is not necessarily a grump the entire book but definitely in the beginning so this is about archer and um brie so brie moves to this small town she learns about archer who is kind of like the town recluse everyone talks about him like gossip wise everyone gossips about him he kind of like lives in his house he's this 
quiet guy who just has a big beard and doesn't talk to anybody. And people in the town literally think he's so weird, which is unfortunate. So Bree's like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go meet this guy and um, see what he's all about. And maybe we can be friends. And so she goes up to Archer. She learns that Archer was actually in a car accident when he was younger and his vocal cords were severed because of it. So Archer does not speak at all. And he actually does know sign. And uh, Bree's father was deaf. And so she knows sign. And so Archer is finally able to communicate with somebody in years because people in this town other than Bree have never taken time in their day to actually communicate with Archer. Um, and so he is like baffled that this woman would want to talk to him. Um, so about at the beginning though, when he is labeled as that town recluse and when he's first getting to know Bree, he's very grumpy, gruff, doesn't want to talk to her, doesn't want the companionship, like doesn't want to talk to anybody. But then once he gets to know Bree, he cannot leave her alone. <laughs> um, and he definitely becomes a softy and he is definitely like a sweetie, but like, at the beginning he's very grumpy and a big recluse so many people including myself adore this book so i of course had to recommend this one so there you have it those are 10 books that follow the grumpy sunshine trope please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to or if you have any other grumpy sunshine recommendations for me i would love to see them um if you have made it this far in the video leave me a um cat emoji because i don't know why sometimes grumpy i think of grumpy cat so Leave me a cat emoji down in the comment section down below if you've made it this far. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.